While the rivalry between Diamond Dallas Page and the Macho Man Randy Savage was yet another feud that was going on during the whole WCW vs NWO storyline that dominated WCW television, the rivalry was actually one of the very best things that happened in World Championship Wrestling during 1997. Whether he was NWO or not, Randy Savage remained extremely popular throughout his WCW tenure. In DDP, well, Diamond Dallas Page was already on the path to become a main event player in World Championship Wrestling, but this rivalry seriously pushed DDP to the next level. Watching Page in late 1996 and early 1997, you just knew that he was going to make it to the big time, but Randy Savage would be there to legitimise the master of the diamond cutter and Page's rise to the top was expedited thanks to a series of matches with a true legend of the wrestling business. Today's video looks at the Dallas Page vs Randy Savage rivalry of 1997. DDP's mid-card push really began back at Slamboree 1996 when he won the Lord of the Ring tournament. DDP was the television champion prior to this but he was mostly found wrestling matches on WCW Saturday Night and in the WCW Nitro Dark matches during the early days of the television show. After Slamboree and after Nitro went to a 2 hour format, fans would get to see more of Diamond Dallas Page and even though he worked as a heel, he still managed to win fans over thanks to his outlandish promos and also thanks to his diamond cutter finisher. Page would brag that there were thousands of ways that his opponents could fall victim to the diamond cutter and this helped get the move over. Fans in arenas would pop when the cutter was performed but still Page kept working as a heel. That was until the NWO became a thing and the whole infrastructure of WCW was turned upside down. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall noticed that DDP was gaining a lot of momentum and so the outsiders would do everything they could to recruit Page into the New World Order. Remember too that Scott Hall was once the diamond stud and Kevin Nash teamed with Page when Nash portrayed the Vinny Vegas character. So there was a little backstory here that went beyond the NWO just wanting to recruit another WCW guy. During a tournament to crown a new United States Champion, the Outsiders would give their unwanted help to Diamond Dallas Page in an effort to recruit him into the NWO, but Page would turn the Outsiders down, saying he wants no part of the New World Order and he kinda wanted to remain a loner. So during the finals of the US title tournament at Starcade 96, the Outsiders cost DDP the match and the United States Championship when Scott Hall hit Page with the Outsiders Edge in the middle of the ring. Page had to learn a lesson, when it came to the NWO, you were either with the group or you were against the group. The night following Starcade, Page teased that he could join the NWO, saying the faction is too strong and he may have made a mistake. Two weeks later, it looked like DDP had gave in and joined the New World Order. Page put on the NWO shirt and the Outsiders looked pretty happy. That was until Page dropped Scott Hall with a diamond cutter. Page credits this moment right here as his big break. There were only a select few people who could get one over on the New World Order and it wasn't like Page was in the main events. This was all apparently Hall and Nash's idea and it worked wonders for DDP, effectively making Page one of WCW's top babyfaces with just one short segment. The spot worked so well that it was kind of recreated at NWO sold out a few weeks later. The NWO B team wanted to recruit Page this time. Page put on the NWO shirt and Scott Norton took the diamond cutter before Page ran into the audience again, getting a great ovation in the process. Page's main adversary in the NWO though wouldn't be Scott Hall, Kevin Nash or Scott Norton. It would turn out to be one of the NWO's most recent additions, the Macho Man Randy Savage. 
Eric Bischoff told Randy Savage that he could only come back to WCW if he joined the New World Order, so the Macho Man found himself in a real tough position but we all thought that he was gonna stay loyal to WCW. At Super Brawl 7, during the main event match pitting Hulk Hogan against Roddy Piper, Randy Savage turned on WCW and joined the NWO by helping out Hollywood Hogan. The following night, DDP had a match with Dave Taylor and the NWO came out to attack Paige. Randy Savage blindsided DDP and this right here is what started the Dallas Page vs Randy Savage rivalry. This little segment is more remembered for this fan who jumped into the ring afterwards. Our guy wanted to celebrate with the NWO but he gets the shit kicked out of him instead. And after this slight hiccup, the macho man spray paints the NWO lettering across Page's back. Savage was then given his NWO shirt and to rub salt in the wounds, the macho man hit Page with a flying elbow drop. Having Savage attack Page though was a good move, seeing as the macho man turning his back on WCW was already a massive blow to fans of World Championship Wrestling, while Page was climbing up the ranks as this sort of rebellious character who the fans were really starting to get behind. It didn't stop there though, a little later on, the NWO rewarded Savage by giving him the managerial services of his ex-wife, Miss Elizabeth. It was made clear that Randy Savage vs Dallas Page was gonna happen in the ring when Dallas announced the following week that Savage would eventually snap into a diamond cutter. Page had more to say the following week when Nitro was at Club La Vela, but the lights went out and the audio was cut off. This wasn't the actions of the NWO by the way, it was just a problem with production. Later in the broadcast, the NWO were so excited about Dennis Rodman joining the faction that they completely forgot DDP's name, playing it off like Diamond Dallas Page was absolutely no threat at all to the New World Order. It would turn out though that the Macho Man knew quite a lot about DDP and things would start getting personal when Kimberly Page became a focal point of the rivalry. At WCW Uncensored on March 16th 1997, Page was cutting a promo on Savage but the Macho Man decided to make an appearance while revealing Kimberly's recent Playboy photo shoot to the world. Savage also announced that Kimberly and DDP were legitimately married, something that wasn't common knowledge to casual wrestling fans, but those who bought the Playboy magazine would have probably put two and two together, <laughs> you know who you are. Kimberly then showed up with the trademark black NWO spray paint covering her dress and this leads to the macho man blindsiding page once again and the NWO letters getting spread across his back again. Kimberly tries to protect her husband but this leads to more humiliation. Miss Elizabeth helps spray paint Kimberly's back and the segment goes off the air with the macho man mocking DDP and Kimberly. Good stuff here, this took the feud to the next level and fans were getting eager to see Page vs Savage take place inside the ring. The next night on Monday Nitro, DDP said that Savage was a dead man walking. The macho man appeared and he agreed to give Page a match. DDP wanted to take on Savage right there and then, but Randy got out of harm's way, meaning that the bout was going to take place in the future. The following week, Savage wanted to take the TV title away from Prince Iakea, but Page showed up during the bout. Dallas was unable to get his hands on the Macho Man and DDP ended up taking an absolute beating from the New World Order, even Eric Bischoff got in on the action. But this whole rivalry was now becoming one of the main reasons why people were tuning into WCW. The following week, DDP vs Randy Savage was made official for Spring Stampede 1997. Dallas Page went into Spring Stampede fully expecting to lose the match but he didn't care either. DDP is a different kind of cat and there's no real stories out there of him playing politics and that in itself is incredible seeing as we're talking about 1997 WCW here. Sure, Page had friends in the NWO but we never hear of Page 
stage trying to get in the main event spots at the expense of others and we never hear stories of Paige refusing to do jobs. So Paige was going into Spring Stampede just happy that he was getting a chance to wrestle the Macho Man Randy Savage on WCW pay per view. It was a privilege for him. What DDP didn't expect was for Randy Savage to tell him that Paige was actually going to win the match tonight and that the Macho Man felt like taking the diamond cutter on pay per view. DDP said, We're getting ready for Spring Stampede. It was just me and Randy in the locker room, and Arn Anderson walks in. Nobody told Randy what the finish was, and so Arn says, Randy, what would you like the finish to be tonight? He pulls up his boots, he ties them tight, and he goes, Well, I think I want to take the diamond cutter tonight. I'm just looking at Arn and he's looking at me and he says, Well Diamond, I hope you realise this is an important thing for your career. I'm like, yep, I do. It meant an incredible lot to Diamond Dallas Page that Randy Savage would take an interest in his career, that Randy could see a star in Dallas Page whereas others would have used their stroke and creative control to simply beat DDP and move on to the next guy. This victory could potentially bring Page to the promised land, the WCW main event picture that was already a seriously tough nut to crack and it was all thanks to the macho man Randy Savage that Page got this opportunity. One of the big boys of the main event scene was seemingly holding the door open for DDP to step inside. All DDP had to do was deliver in the ring. Paige went to the ring along with Kimberly, knowing that this was a true make or break moment for him and Savage was there to make sure it all went down without a hitch. What's more, this no disqualification match was placed in the main event spot of the show so you can just imagine the pressure here. The Macho Man grabs a mic and he tells Paige that this isn't his big day, it's his last day on earth and while Savage looks pretty confident as he looks at his opponent, the Macho Man runs away when Paige goes for the kill. Savage tries to take the advantage on the entranceway but Paige gets the upper hand, drilling Savage into the guardrail. The two men get into the ring and Paige has to stop Savage from escaping once again. The nerves are maybe on show here when there seems to be a slight miscommunication over this move right here but this is the only hiccup we'll see during the bout. Page goes for the diamond cutter but Savage holds onto the ropes. This allows Savage to take the fight to the outside and the two men begin fighting in the audience. Page gets rammed into some double doors but Dallas uses some trash cans to slow the macho man down. The two men continue to fight in the audience before they come back to the ringside area where Savage uses Kimberly to his advantage. This allows Savage to take control and DDP takes a beating. A double axe handle from Savage gets delivered before Page gets thrown into the steel steps, not once, but twice. And Randy pins DDP inside the ring while using the ropes for leverage. He only gets a two count though. Randy goes to the outside and he tells Michael Buffer to get off his chair and back inside the ring DDP gets nailed across the back. The referee makes the decision to take the chair away from Savage afterwards. Not only does Dave Penzer have to give up his chair but he takes a slap to the face too for good measure. Savage then kicks Penzer before throwing the chair into the ring. Page grabs the chair, he throws it at Savage and Page then pushes the chair into Randy's face. This gets a big pop from the audience. Still, Savage is able to get up before DDP and Randy continues to destroy Dallas. Page wakes up and he gives back as good as he gets and again it can't be overstated how the fans are reacting to Diamond Dallas Page here, they absolutely love him. Macho stops DDP's momentum with a big clothesline and the audience goes quiet. Savage gets a little too confident and Page hits a discus clothesline that again brings the crowd back to their feet. DDP just can't keep his momentum at all. Savage keeps getting back up before Page and so Page is unable to follow up. Randy hits a body slam and he goes outside to grab the ring bell. Randy goes to the top rope but Kimberly grabs the bell and Page is then able to get his feet up when Randy jumps down. 
Paige signals for the diamond cutter and the fans put their hands up too. Savage counters the cutter with a backslide attempt and when that doesn't go too well, Randy hits a low blow. Savage gets frustrated when DDP kicks out, slapping the referee and delivering a pile driver before whipping him with his own belt. Randy then goes up top and he hits the elbow drop, but of course there's now no referee. Out comes dodgy NWO referee Nick Patrick. We think it's all over as Savage goes to put Paige away one more time, but Dallas reverses a body slam into the diamond cutter and the roof nearly comes off the arena. Surprisingly, Patrick counts the 1-2-3. Diamond Dallas Page just defeated Randy Savage in the middle of the ring and the reaction the match received couldn't have been any better. Dallas was a made man. Kevin Nash comes down and he holds Patrick by the neck while checking on Savage. The NWO make their way to the ring and Patrick then takes a jackknife powerbomb. Savage then kicks DDP out of the ring and he goes after Kimberly. Bischoff talks sense into Savage but Savage ends up slapping Eric across the face. The segment ends with the NWO holding the macho man back from doing any further damage. To further cement DDP's spot as a big player in WCW, he stood by Sting the very next night on Monday Nitro while fending off an attack from the New World Order. It was made clear though that DDP's rivalry with Macho Man Randy Savage would continue the following week on Nitro when Savage told Paige that his wife wouldn't stop calling him. And this led to Savage continuing to mock DDP over the next few weeks while hinting that he slept with Kimberly Page. All of this was done to simply aggravate the master of the diamond cutter. Sneak attacks by the New World Order would follow and eventually it was agreed that both men would meet each other again inside the ring at the Great American Bash, the second of three pay-per-view matches that Savage and Page would have in 1997. This one would be a Falls Count Anywhere match and while I don't think it was the best match of the 1997 pay-per-view trilogy, it was still extremely good. Page's confidence was now through the roof as DDP vs Savage once again got placed in the main event spot. The first portion of the match sees Dallas completely destroy Savage in and around the ring. The two men fight in the crowd once again and it's all DDP here. Savage takes quite a beating to start this one off but the macho man turns it around by throwing powder into Dallas' eyes. From here Savage completely snaps, not even the referee is safe from the macho madness as Randy again attacks a referee during one of his matchups. Savage goes after Kimberly and former NWO referee Nick Patrick runs down to talk sense into Savage. This leads to DDP and Savage fighting all the way back up the ramp. The two men approach a gimmicked up VIP picnic area that was set up for fans and DDP proceeds to destroy the macho man using all sorts of items found around the picnic tables including a charcoal barbecue. This little brawl is so much fun. Paige stays in control when the match returns to the ring but Savage manages to fight back. Page almost takes a pile driver to the exposed concrete floor but Nick Patrick stops Savage. This results in the macho man hitting yet another referee and a poor photographer also feels the wrath of the macho man. Page hits Savage with a steel chair. He signals for the diamond cutter but Savage hits a low blow. Randy then goes for a suplex and Page manages to counter with the diamond cutter. The the NWO's Scott Hall then shows up, he attacks Nick Patrick and while Paige is able to take care of Hall, he ends up getting blindsided by Savage and Scott Hall follows up with the outsider's edge. Randy then hits the elbow drop and Paige gets pinned in the middle of the ring as the pay per view goes off the air. Page wanted to get some revenge on Scott Hall and so DDP challenged Hall and Savage to a tag team match at Bash at the Beach. The story here was all around who would be Page's mystery tag team partner. Page knew who it was but he was keeping it secret from the New World Order. 
It would turn out to be Kurt Hennig, a man who just made his WCW debut at the end of June. WCW also teased that the mystery partner could be Raven by the way, just thought I'd mention that. The week after Kurt Hennig made his Nitro debut, Randy Savage was booked into a match with La Parka and during the bout, Scott Hall left Randy's corner to give Larry Zabisco a bit of grief. Back inside the ring, La Parka got his feet up when Savage went for the elbow drop and then La Parka hit a diamond cutter. The mask comes off, it wasn't La Parka, it was Diamond Dallas Page and DDP scores a pinfall victory over Savage while the crowd goes nuts. Scott Hall played it great too by the way, he started celebrating when he heard the bell ring but when he noticed it was DDP in the ring, Scott dashed down the rampway but DDP got out of harm's way. This was one of those memorable WCW Nitro moments that was pulled off incredibly well, the audience absolutely loved it and it's great to watch back. At Bash at the Beach 1997, DDP and Kurt Hennig faced Scott Hall and Randy Savage but things didn't work out too well for Diamond Dallas Page. Page was holding the ropes down and this caused Hennig to hit the top rope hard. I think Hennig was supposed to go over the top rope here but anyway, Kurt pushed Page before leaving the match resulting in Page taking the outsider's edge and the flying elbow, subsequently losing the match. This would lead to Page beginning a short feud with Kurt Hennig that would build and build over the next few episodes of Nitro until finally Hennig vs Page took place at WCW Road Wild 97, a match that Kurt Hennig won. There was still more left in the tank when it came to Page vs Savage though and the two men would meet up one more time on pay per view. The feud started up again when DDP teamed up with Lex Luger to take on Savage and Hall in two separate matches. The first took place at Clash of the Champions and the second at Fall Brawl. The Clash match ended when DDP hit a blind diamond cutter on his own tag team partner leading to Scott Hall pinning Luger for the win. But at Fall Brawl, Page and Luger were able to defeat Hall and Savage when Larry Sabisco got in the ring. Larry pushed Scott, Luger got a roll up and Sabisco counted the pinfall win. While there was nothing wrong with these tag team matches, the singles encounters between Savage and Page had been received much better and so it was decided that the two men would face each other one last time on pay per view at Halloween Havoc. DDP challenged Savage to the Halloween Havoc match the night after Fall Brawl. Savage agreed to the match a little later in the evening during an NWO promo and just like that our match was booked. The 6th of October episode of Nitro featured a match between DDP and Disco Inferno and just after Page hit the diamond cutter Randy Savage came out to launch an attack. Thanks to Roddy Piper, Savage ended up taking a diamond cutter on the concrete floor and this resulted in Randy Savage getting stretchered out of the arena. Two weeks later, Randy Savage returned during an NWO beatdown on DDP and Roddy Piper and Dallas ended up taking the elbow drop while Savage was still wearing a neck brace. Fans may remember this one because Sting showed up afterwards while hiding under a Sting mask, go figure. The next week, Paige and Piper disguised themselves as Sting when they began an assault on Savage, Bischoff and Hogan and Nitro went off the air with a steel cage being lowered around the ring and the NWO getting trapped inside with DDP, the hot rod and the real sting, some good stuff here. Ok so let's wrap things up by looking at the Halloween Havoc match and once again Savage and Page beat the hell out of each other all around the MGM arena for around 20 minutes. This one was billed as a Las Vegas sudden death match but it's just a last man standing match really so you know what you're getting yourself into when you sit down to watch this one. If Spring Stampede was the best Page vs Savage match then I think this one was a close second although it's hard to choose the Great American Bash match was good also. It starts off with a brawl on the outside where Page gets the advantage. Savage manages to gain control momentarily in the ring but Page comes back with a series of punches. The two men go through a few spots that play up to the last man standing stipulation as expected and it doesn't take long at all before Page and 
salvage her back on the outside, eventually fighting through the crowd again. The injured ribs become a target for Randy Savage as the two men fight their way to the entranceway, and Randy Savage ends up taking a few bumps at the Halloween Havoc tombstones that have been set up. This is what most people remember from this match. Randy turns things around when the competitors get back to the ringside area. Savage goes to use a video camera on Paige, but DDP gets the feed up, resulting in the camera smashing in the macho man's face. Noticing that Savage could be knocked out, Miss Elizabeth jumps up and she smashes the referee's head with a tray. Elizabeth then begins choking DDP, but Kimberly Page runs down to save the day, something that gets Dusty Rhodes extremely excited on commentary. Kimberly brings Elizabeth back up the ramp and so Savage won't have any more help. Both men are spent, but the match goes on. Diamond Dallas Page gets the upper hand and it looks like we're going to see the end of the bout. Page signals for the diamond cutter, but just like Spring Stampede, Savage holds on to the top rope. A tired Randy Savage goes up for the elbow drop, but he doesn't get all of it. Savage is too beaten up to deliver the move properly. DDP makes it to his feet before the 10 count, but he takes a body slam before Savage goes back upstairs. And this time, Savage nails the elbow drop perfectly. Somehow, DDP gets up, and when Savage goes for another body slam, the referee gets knocked down, but Paige still hits the diamond cutter. The referee wakes up and the count starts, both men get back to their feet at 8, and then Paige takes a low blow that sends him to the outside of the ring. Out walks a fake sting, and Paige gets hit with a baseball bat. DDP is unable to get back to his feet, and Randy Savage wins the final match of this rivalry. The fake sting turned out to be Hollywood Hulk Hogan. The two men would have a few more meetings in the future, usually during NWO beatdowns, but the feud was now pretty much over. Page would win the US title at Starcade and he would have a well received triple threat match at Uncensored with Chris Benoit and Raven, and he would get even more attention when he teamed up with Carl Malone at Bash at the Beach 98 to take on Dennis Rodman and Hulk Hogan. The following year, DDP would make it to the promised land when he became the WCW Heavyweight Champion. As for Randy Savage, his job was done. Savage had helped Paige make it to the main events of WCW, and Randy would go into a short feud with Lex Luger at the beginning of 1998, and then a few months afterwards, he and Kevin Nash would form the NWO Wolfpack. The DDP vs Savage rivalry would win the PWI Feud of the Year award, and when you think of all the other rivalries that took place in 1997, including Bret Hart vs Steve Austin, it really does say a lot about how entertaining Page vs Savage truly was. I'll end this one with a quote then from DDP. Page is talking here about Thanksgiving of 1997. That November on Thanksgiving, everybody was calling me and saying, thank you DDP, I appreciate you helping me out. There were so many people I helped get jobs. I thought, God, who am I thankful for besides my family, besides Dusty Rhodes, who was my mentor, besides Jake Roberts and Jody Hamilton, who am I really thankful to? I thought, I gotta call Savage. So I picked up the phone and I got his answer machine. I go, Randy, I know you're probably going to think this is a little corny, but I just got to tell you, man, without you, I'm not sitting in this spot in life right now. And I want you to know, for what it's worth, I really appreciate it, man. I hope you have a really great Thanksgiving. And that was it. Two weeks go by, I didn't even see him, and I forgot about it. Next TV taping, he comes up to me. Diamond Khmer, he was just as intense behind the scenes. He pulls me aside and I'm like, oh man, what did I do? He goes, I got your message and I gotta tell you, I played it for my dad. And I said, dad, did you ever get a message like this from one of the boys? And he said, Randy, I never even heard of anyone getting a message like this from one of the boys. Then Randy said, I just want you to know it meant everything to me. And he gave me this big bear hug.